This is a plant you're likely to see in a lot of meadows and things like that around here. This is milkweed. And this plant is really important for monarch butterflies. They lay their eggs on the leaves so that uh, the caterpillars can eat them. And that actually makes them poisonous. And this plant is indeed poisonous to us as well. But when the plant is young, you can actually eat the shoots and the leaves. And uh, you just have to boil them up and then they're good to eat. And right now, actually, the seed pods are edible, so long as you cook them as well. Now, the way to identify this plant is that when it's young, you want to make sure that the stem is fuzzy and that it also has a milky sap. Now, if it's smooth or if it has no milky sap, it could either be dogbane or some other uh, poisonous plant that you cannot cook. And of course, the seed pods here are really distinctive. These don't come out until maybe uh, late July, early August. But we're gonna cook some of these up and try to make a meal. And the amazing thing is that all the materials I need to cook my food can be found right in this little ditch in the middle of suburbia. Pretty cool. Now, I am only gonna take a couple pods from each plant. Two reasons. One, whenever you're foraging for wild edibles, it's a good idea to only take a little bit from each plant in general, because you don't want to do any harm to one individual plant, and you want to protect the ecosystem. Two, like I mentioned earlier, this plant is especially important for monarch butterflies, and uh, they have not been appearing as frequently as they used to. And in fact, I believe there's a tiny, tiny monarch caterpillar right on here. They start out really small and they get really big. Now the key is to collect some of the smaller pods. Uh, less than two inches is ideal. This one looks pretty good. And there's two things you can do to check and make sure it's not too mature. First, if you squeeze the pod a little and it splits open really easily, it's a good sign that it's not good for eating. Second, uh, if the seeds inside are still white, that's good, but if they're uh, brown and already sort of dry and fuzzy, that's probably not going to be a good pod to eat. So you really have to get these while they're still young. And once again, I'm only taking a couple from each plant and leaving plenty on there for Mother Nature. Of course, something that grows even more prominently in this ditch than the milkweed are these cattails. And cattail is one of the finest natural tinders that I've come across. So I'm just going to take a few of these heads and uh, this should be all I need. Now there's actually some really good firewood in this ditch. Now, I wouldn't blame you if you thought I had put these here and planned this so that I could say that I found my firewood in the ditch also. Well, the truth is I actually did put these here, but it was about seven months ago when I did. I came here to uh, have some tea and start a little fire in the snow in the winter. But anyway, it's here so I might as well use it. I've got this nice saw, very simple design, probably a pretty cheap saw, but it works well enough. And I've got to thank my friend, he, uh, he's going traveling for a while on some trains, going on a really awesome adventure. I'm a bit envious, honestly, but he let me uh, have his saw because he wasn't going to use it. And works quite well.
I can't begin to tell you how hard it was to start this fire. I got a flame going twice, got my uh, feather sticks lit and everything, and then poof, nothing. The uh, cattails were way too young and green, so I had to resort to using some uh, thistle seeds, which actually worked pretty well. But uh, it really just goes to show the key to fire making is lots and lots of preparation. More preparation than you think you need. So I finally just collected a bunch of thistle seeds, uh, feathered a bunch of sticks, a lo lot of little ones. It's pretty humid conditions right now, so it takes a lot to start a fire here. But now we can finally boil some water and uh, get our milkweed pods cooking. Well, one thing that ironically you don't want to get from the ditch is water. I've brought my own bottle of tap water. And you're gonna want to boil these pods to get rid of any of the toxins that might be inside of them. One thing I do want to mention is you'll notice that I've actually got this fire on a platform of larger logs. And there's two reasons for that. One is that uh, it's wet on the ground, so I wanted to have something dry to start the fire on. And two, actually, if you have a fire, lots of little things burning down onto bigger wood, rather than what's usually the reverse, where you have big wood on top, uh, the fire tends to last longer and burn for a longer while. Well, once the pods are boiled, the toxins are all gone, you can just dump the water. I've got here some sesame oil. And I'm just gonna give these pods a little stir fry in the fire. I've also brought a bit of this, uh, chili bean powder, or chili bean sauce rather, Do Banjian in Chinese. The brand is Lee Kum Ki. I'll do uh, another video on this sometime. But I'm just gonna take a bit of this. And put it on there. And next, I've got bit of salt, bit of pepper, and my favorite, I've got garlic powder, putting that on quite generously. And I'm just gonna put this pan right on this fire. that this smells absolutely incredible. Well, I'm gonna give this a try. It smells great. People have described it as okra, and that's what I expected it to taste like. But it's uh, not as slimy as okra, actually. I'm gonna take some back for the others to try. Anyway. Thank you for joining me. I hope you get to try some milkweed pods sometime. Hopefully by the time you see this video it won't be too late, but there's always next year if that's the case. It's absolutely delicious. But anyway, check out our full episode right here. And uh, you can see some of our other side videos down there. This is just such a beautiful night. I might stay out a little bit longer.
It's actually pretty good. It's, um... I don't know how to describe it, but... It's kind of chewy. It's like okra, but it's not slimy. And, um... The pod kind of, like, gets juicy, so it holds all the flavors in it. So it's actually really good. I could... I could eat this on a daily basis with a meal. Yeah, uh, I'm, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs>